Hey guys, John Loxy here, back with our blind playthrough of In Other Waters. I'm hoping every episode we do, we get a little bit closer. I'm still astonished that this is an environmental story about who knows what, saving the planet maybe, but we have to exploit animals and turn them into improvised explosive devices in order to do so. Um, yeah, I... I'm gonna keep going. I'm this is like the sixth episode I've recorded today, and I'm just ready. A, a lot of games I get ready to be done. Um But not like this. This is one you know, the first couple episodes I was mad, and then when I realized how bad the game really is. All that anger just went away, and now it's just like I just want to finish it. I just want, I'm just so worn out from just like I can't, I just can't believe it. I'm just like this is ridiculous. Which is, oh, we're hearing we're hearing stuff now. I I, I like the look, and and it's so, man. I, I just I just feel like there's some stuff that you just look at and you're like, wait, why? What did you do? Where you're, you did what? That just, if you had not done those things, it would have been 100% better. Um, yeah, and as far as the yes or no, yeah, nothing's... There is no story. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no bond. They're like, oh, it's gonna... the mist, Solving the mystery will bring you closer together. It's like, I don't even... I don't even like her. She's considered me an afterthought this entire time lashed out at me emotionally the first thing she said to me basically when when we saved her is do you even know what you're doing so it's like she's unlikable as a character and apparently i mean you know kind of like ray from star wars she knows how to do everything she's a which is funny because she can repair stuff she can do this she can do that she can interface alien technology with other stuff or, or whatever interface 20 year old technology with modern systems well I guess she, it's apparently it's good that she's good with that stuff because she's a biologist that doesn't know that mold doesn't need sunlight to grow it doesn't do photosynthesis it's just astonishing how you just see that stuff and you're like really? So let's keep going. I'd like to... Oh, Bebe Jack. I'd like to get through the game. I don't know how many more hours it's going to take. Um, okay, so Twisted Frame. The spars of the frame stick out of the sand like fractured ribs. Fronds and other growths closing the gaps between them. Fractured plates. Broad, flat plates of the wreck sit at right angles to each other, forming a complex of angular walls. Signed, E.V. Dr. Ellery Voss, Lord of the Oceans. Um, I don't know where I should go. Should I go this way or? They said north. Whatever, let's go this, let's try going this way. Hull entry is split in what must have once been the vessel's hull, allows passage into the overgrown interior. Okay, that's probably the right way to go. Oh, this is bigger than if this is all this, then we got to keep going up towards the head, presumably, or towards the uh, the bow. Melted corridor. The brine has left everything but the vaguest. Is that how you spell that? I guess so. Maybe left everything but the vaguest shape of the vessel impossible to, to define. We are entering the main body of the wreck now. It's a little more than a husk. It is impossible to tell anything from these rusted plates. Whose ship was this? The local ecosystem looks to have been scraped away, have been scraping away at this thing for decades. Nothing much left for us. It is weird though. She does talk to herself. That's basically what she's doing. It's the same thing as this stuff. It's a journal entry. You know, it's not us. Overgrown bay. This bay, perhaps once a cargo hold, is being scraped away at by frond like creatures, releasing flakes of orange rust into the water. So it's iron? Or 
Or steel, maybe? I think steel rusts in a orange fashion. Sealed locker, half buried in sand. The industrial seals and the equipment locker have held. Must have been protected from the crash within this bay. So it is human. Look, a still sealed dive suit locker. Let's see if we can get it open, I guess. Okay, I think I can lever. How are you? I guess I don't understand the mechanics of how you can't swim. We have to use the suit, but you can use what? Yes, it's open, but there's not a lot here. Wait, this cutting torch looks clean enough with a little work. This could be salvaged. Is this bike haul tech? Hard to tell. Looks compatible with the suit, though. I'll stow it and see what we can do with it when we get back to base. So are we supposed to go back to base? I don't... I mean, I don't... Hmm. Breached plates. I'm gonna keep going. I feel like... She didn't specifically say go back to base. Like, okay, that's all. That's that's enough. We, let's head back to base now. Plates of the wreck buckle and bend outwards here, bent away by some huge interior force. Impact craters. Craters cluster around the vessel, suggest an explosive force of some considerable magnitude. Melted debris. Most of the wreck must have already been lost to the brine. Only this section remains precariously settled on a silt bank. <sighs> um, which way? This way or that? Let's try going here. Wreck garden. Whatever its origin, the wreck here has become a sanctuary for the ocean's life. There is a beauty to its reclamation. None of this adds up. If there's a wreck here, then there are people. And if there are people, well, why doesn't everyone know about this place, about its incredible life? We spent centuries looking for life outside of Earth and found nothing. I've seen so many dead planets, so many barren worlds. I've certified each of them clear of life. Really? How? Just so an exoplanet extraction core can pick them clean for maximum profit. Aha! Strip mine them for the resources and our ever-expanding species needs. There you go. This place is impossible, one in millions, yet it is already marked by our greedy fingerprints. Who brought the ship here? This has to be the history Mine wanted to uncover. Let's head back to base. There's more to find, I'm sure of it. Why don't... Okay, so do we go north? Wreck edge north of here, the debris field fades away as the ocean floor slopes towards the abyssal plain. Which we're gonna go to eventually. Yep, that's all. All right. Oh yeah. She gonna talk to me again. Something has happened. Come to medical now. Mine is growing. She... I haven't dared go in. Well, you brought her up from the deep. Of course. I can't make sense of the readouts. Her vitals are unreadable. She she is still alive. Whatever kept her alive on the slopes is changing her somehow. I, I've been sat here watching her. I don't know what to do. Do you think she's in pain? Probably. How can you know? Her brain is active, but she's unresponsive. You actually still feel pain when you're unconscious. Your body knows about it. There are procedures. Every base deck is equipped with quarantine systems. I can authorize the lab to be purged. End it now. Is that still Mine? I can't. What do you think? Should I authorize the purge? Yes. Yes, I... It's not safe. Mine, I... No, this is wrong. You are wrong. I won't do this. Oh my god, we're all dying. I understand you want to protect me, but we can't. I'm not, I don't care about protecting you, to be honest, but if you're asking me if that's the right thing to do, I mean, it's, but it, we can't not after everything. Just because we don't understand something doesn't mean it is dangerous to us. That's correct. I thought you are a biologist. I thought you would understand that. Really? Insults again? I'm the rational one here. You're going on feelings. We need to keep going. 
We need to understand this. Okay, we could do this. I hooked up the cutting touch from the debris field. I hope it helps. I need some answers. Let's find that other ROV. So you don't even want me to go to medical? Right? I thought you would understand that. It's like, you only have one life. If you get contaminated, if it's something that, you know... If it's some kind of disease that she brought up with you, with her, and you get it, then you're dead. There you go. It's like, if you, if you, Sue, if you think there's some sort of quarantine thing... You know, is she still quarantined? Are the seals secure and all that stuff? If, if so, then you don't need to worry about it. Probably, right? Uh, error, vital signs unclear. Foreign genetic material detected. Rapid tissue growth. Error, error, error. Well, yeah, I mean, look at all of it. And that's presumably, what's her name? Is she in with her? Whatever. I love how she made it an insult, too. Just like a woman. Unfortunately, yeah. That's why we're men. We make the decisions that protect people. And women are like, ah, oh, or children. Or children. Most women. I, I say women, I don't... There are very few women today. Most of the females are basically just overgrown children. Because if you wanted to... You know, it, it's all about protecting. You have to protect your the in-group. You know, protect yourself, protect your family, whatever. Like, we don't even know- we don't even know her relationship to Mine at this point. And she asked me to purge without even going down there. It's like, she's rapidly growing. Okay, is it... Like, what- I, what does that mean? Personal log. Is Mine still Mine? What has this place done to her? I've barely been able- I've barely been able to leave the medical level, though I dare not enter the surgery. Did she do this by choice? Why do you keep asking questions to what you know the answers to, probably? Of course she did. She felt she could survive down in the deep. Whatever she did is because of that. Those few months of Kepler, it was clear Mina was struggling with something we never spoke about, it, but behind her intensity lay a frenzied self-doubt. She never talked about her family. All I knew she was a rare spacer born out in the black on some orbital military base. Some days she wouldn't leave the berth, just curled up so small, staring silently and loud. Would she do this on purpose? Open up her suit and willingly slip into the deep? I suppose it doesn't matter now. All I can do is monitor her. At least I'm not alone. Are you talking about me or are you talking about her? I assume she's talking about her. She still doesn't consider us... Like, whatever. Even, even that. Like, she's freaking out. Come to- you think I should purge her? <laughs> I knew you would say that. I can't. I expected you to understand. Fine. Be like that. You know? Just remember, dudes. Men. Any of you that are watching this. All of you that are... That are lonely. That feel like... You need to find um, some woman out there that's your soulmate or whatever. No, that's a lie. I mean, if you could find an actual woman, sure. Um, but all these females are just girls that never grew up. They just aged. They're still children. They're not able to take care of a family. They're not, be they're not able to be a good partner. If you could find one, sure, but they're, they're just not out there, you know? The only thing you could do is work on yourself. It's like... It's, it's like... It's like money. You know, if you never... If you don't think you're ever going to be rich, just be... Just work with what you've got. Get yourself into a lifestyle that will keep you content let's say let's say you have almost nothing figure out a way to be happy at that point you know that's 
that's what I'm looking to do. Like, I don't know how long I'll be able to work uh, before, like, something goes wrong with my arms or shoulder or back or something like that. Um, and especially with the economy going the way that is, it's like, for me, I don't want to... You see all those people that are... Um, that always need more. They're like, oh, I need, I need the BMW, I need this, I need that. They're never going to be satisfied. They're trying to fill some void in their heart with stuff. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to need that stuff. I want, I want to be happy not needing anything. I want to be free of desire or as free as desire as possible, you know? I want to be able to retire and like, go to the library and just sit there and read you know walk out in the morning and with a cup of coffee and just sit there and kind of watch watch the clouds or whatever you know and that's free you know I don't want to be the person that's like oh I need fancy gold plated steaks to eat or something you know like no I just because I'll, I'll never have that kind of money anyway and especially with the economy the way that it's going could take a crap and then you know, so I want to be content with, with very little. Um, and if I can go for that, then I think, you know, that's, that's kind of happiness. You know what I mean? That's, that's sort of what we need to look at. Same with, same with this stuff. Like, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Go out there and make friends. Most, I mean, it, it's hard enough with regular people because most people just straight up dudes. Most of them are children too. Like very few people are actually adults. It's really hard. It's really hard. All right, let's uh. All right, um, I think we still want to go this way, right? I think we, we head up and then, yeah, there's that other way. I believe. Why we needed the cutting thing, I don't know. There we go. Declining slope, the pale floor descends rapidly away from the ridge in this direction towards a field of shadowy outcrops. Base salt towers, another group of towers rises towards the pale light. Each strata piled with silver silt. Again. Shadowed gap in the shadow of the towers, there is a deep silence. Go north. Wide gap flanked by the towers. This pass leads ever deeper down the slope. Ah, uh, more of those things, huh? Veil shimmer along the slope, marked with both glittering lights and the dark remains of those creatures who strayed too close. Can we use our... Well, it looks like we're probably going to have to go through. More veils. We need to be careful. There has to be a way to find the path through. I mean, I guess we could try going back here and around. Pale passage from the... Between the towers, a pale, pale blue light flickers over the rocks. Veil tangle. Veils reach out towards the black basalt towers, emanating flashes of cyan light. Clear water. A gap has opened up between the veils, allowing passage between their gauzy bodies. All right. Splitting veil. Veil is in the process of splitting away from the rest of its body. Is this how veils are born, or is this an injury? Tangle edge. Even on the far side of the tangle, the veil's lights can be overwhelming, multiplying my shadow in all directions.
points of light. With the blinding veils behind me, I noticed smaller pinpricks of light moving across the slope. There are other creatures here. That's kind of neat. Overgrown outcrop. This outcrop hides a wealth of life from long-legged crawlers and filter feeders to blurred shapes which flit through the suit's lamps. Glowing fan. This huge curved fan glows with a warm bioluminescence. Waves of amber light pass up its considerable height. Okay. It's always amber. Everything's amber. Let's keep going north. Oh, this is a cutting torch? Ah, and of course it uses power. Ovular growths. Standing beside these clusters of egg-like forms, I could feel them filtering huge volumes of seawater and pulsing gulps. Downward slope away from the outcrop. The silty slope begins to descend again. Ah, great. More veils, huh? Well, we'll try going west. Veil field, a large field of veils whose pale blue light appears unpleasantly cold in comparison to the warmth of the oasis. Oh, hello. No wonder Mine's ROVs never return. These veils are everywhere. Like on Earth, they must rely on predation to survive this deep where little sunlight reaches. That's right, Manny. That's right. That's all? Okay. Uh, yeah, veil clearing. Who knows how temporary these gaps in the walls of veils are. We should make use of them while we can. But if we go that way, we hit the veil. Let's go this way. Tangled veils. The tangled veils create a translucent twitching maze. Mm-hmm. There you go. I lay down, my cutie. Uh, hypnotic lights. There's a beauty to being inside a field of veils, a song of light that makes it impossible to keep a sense of direction. Oh, there you go. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're okay. You're okay. The sounds really help. Veil passage. Avenue between the veils. Flickering shapes caught in the suit's lamp suggest other creatures make use of the safe passage, too. I thought it was temporary. I'm sorry, my little cat. Okay, you're fine. You're just... Oh, sorry. Okay, there you go. He has foots still. Okay, narrowing passage. The veils are coming together ahead. I hope this gap will remain open long enough for us to pass through. Who knows? Creature remains. Uh, veil is hung with the husks of his catches, like the dark clouds obscuring the starlit sky of its bioluminescence. Veil field. Past the drifting sheets, another pattern of light skirts around the edges of the tangle. A mutual predator to the veils, perhaps? We'll probably find the ROV, and then we'll, um, be able to refill. Tangle edge, a gap in the tightly knotted veils leads to the welcoming amber light of another oasis. It's always amber and silt. Glowing fan. The fan shimmers with the waves of cold fire bathing the surrounding oasis in warm light. Living outcrop. Tiny creatures crawl silently along the layers of dark rock, leaving behind small strange marks in the shallow silt piles. Yeah, I'm not- I'm not gonna read any of this crap. I'm not gonna read any of the- the animal stuff. Not- not when you're like... Not when you're surprised that Fungus doesn't use photosynthesis. You know, the- the writer has proven to me they don't know what the hell they're talking about, so it's like... Why am I gonna read your stuff? I'm gonna read the bare minimum, I'm gonna read the journal entries that show that... Ellery Voss... Doctor Extraordinaire is, uh, uh... Like, how did she survive? You know, if she's a diver... I want to believe. You don't understand. You're just... Eh, you don't know. 
Like, okay. You're a diver, right? I'm pretty sure divers make... You, you panic? You get emotional on a dive? You're done. You know? Um... These pale pulsing creatures have noticeable growths budding off from their central form. We could sample them here. Yeah, but we won't. Not unless we have to. Probably gotta go north again. Oh, that's why. Uh, what about these? Yeah, let's... Wait, what? Okay. There we go. Um, mm, let's go. Let's go this way. Shelf edge, as the basalt shelf uh, shelf sinks black back into the silt, the ocean floor falls away into a huge field of glittering veils. Wonderful. Where where is the ROV? Um, I don't want to cross that, so let's go this way. Veil field. Away from the outcrops, the veils claim what territory they can. This field is large, I've seen, wandering away into the deep. Veil gap is split, and the veils leads into their ornate... Really? You're stealing our energy? Uh, navigating this huge tangle will be a struggle. The veils are reaching towards this point on the ocean floor like vines seeking the sun. Um, hmm. I didn't read it because I thought we were going to um, get attacked again. Curving walls lead to another gap in the tangle filled with light and movement. Uh, really? So they, they're just like, screw you, buddy. Another clearing in the field surrounded by possible routes both through the pat and past the flickering veils. Tangle split. Tangle split away from another here, moving down the slope away from the field. Maybe you can use these or sample them. Well, then again, I don't know what they are. I mean, they're part of the thing. Whatever. Tangle split away from each other. The density of the field starts to thin out. Be nice if we could just tangle edge. The veils thin out, the last of their light falling across the sandy slopes as it descends into deeper water. <sighs> the slope continues its irresistible descent towards the distant abyssal plains, so we have to be getting close. Rock shelf, another shelf appears out of the dark, but nowhere in its surface can I see the warm glow of a fan. I bet the ROV is there, though. Basalt outcrop. Unlike the other outcrops, this one is free of life. It is the proximity of the veils vital for the other colony's coexistence? I don't know, maybe? There you go. Disabled ROV. Another of Mini's ROVs scattered across the outcrop. We should be still able to use its transmission core to reach the base. Here, in the middle of the outcrop, an ROV. This one was carrying a supply cache too. We can recharge and refill our oxygen. Let's access its ma map data. Open up the terminal when you are ready, peon. Okay, it seems like this ROV was disabled by, by the veils like the other one. This can't be right. The mapping scans report a large physical anomaly just north of here. From the data, it looks like a structure. That's impossible. Maybe the veils find the sensors. Either way, we should go check it out. All right, well, we're full on stuff. Shelf edge. Past the shelf, there is only the dark of the descending slope. Well, there's the structure. It's pretty close, at least. Dark water. There's nothing here but the silt flickering in the suit's headlamps. How many synonyms for silt are there? Wow, it's pretty big, actually. Angular rocks. Some strangely geometric rocks sit in the dark. What are these formations?
Unknown structure. A huge flat structure bedded into the seafloor. Could Mine have built this? Probably not. Maybe, though. You never know. What are we looking at here? It appears to be some kind of shaft cut into the bedrock. I can't see the bottom. Who made this? It looks like it's been here far longer than anything else. Dark shaft. A yawning black shaft that descends into the seafloor. An anomaly that must be solved. Oh, descent possible? Of course. Boop. Well, let's go. How do we descend anyway? Are we just floating? Oh, we keep going down, huh? Um, well, looks like two rooms. Let's go, let's go to this one first. Open shaft. The suit's lamps reveal two dark holes on opposite side of the shaft. They're torn edges, thick with crimson rust. Shadowed corridor. The bent entryway bulges inward like the interior corridor of some huge creature's distended body. I guess. You're gonna talk? Oh, there's something on the wall there. Sand choked room. Sand drifts, sand drifts soften the metal room. On the far wall, strange spirals glint in the headlamps as a pale creature obsessively traces their patterns. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to click on it unless it... I guess it wants me to. Whatever. Pale polyp. This almost motionless polyp with its waving cilia is anchored to the middle. Oh. Its pale flesh is drained of color. These pale creature creatures are scraping patterns into the walls. What are they? Let's see what we can find out. Um, I mean, I clicked on it. I don't know what else you want. I clicked. Oh, okay. So we're going to have to find more of them. Collapsed room. The compartment is filled with sand and rock, which looks to have entered through the collapsed ceiling. Really? Okay. I'm not gonna go... What do you mean they're etching stuff into the rock? Okay. All right. I guess, I guess we go back up. I, do I need to go back to the ship? Like, what? Oh, hang on. Can we go down? It says ascent possible. Let's go down. Can still go down again. Let's go down. Aha. Uh -huh. Entry seal, a huge round doorway sealed by a thin metal security iris, the plates of which are furred with orange rust. Is this where we need the thing for? The cutter? Uh. Yep. It's some kind of facility. What was happening down here? Why would someone bury this place so deep? We have to get inside. We can use the torch to cut through the seal. Fire it up. All right. All right, is that, uh, I guess we're cutting. Are we cutting? Is she cutting? What's going on? Okay, it's open, I guess. Yay. Reached corridor. Sand and rock fill one side of the access way. Dark holes in the walls and ceiling reveal layers of eaten away piping and ducts. 
It's always aliens. Even on a different world, always aliens. Entry hall. Beyond the door, a vast dark space opens out in the rock filled with the skeletal remains of rusted machines. Ah, so this is where we came from. Oh, it's all red now. Why? Wait, why did we, uh, we're running out of oxygen or what's going on here? Red sediment. The water is filled with red flakes catching in the lamps from the walls. Rust Rusticles hang in lumpen garlands. Okay. This place is huge. How the hell was it built down here? There's very little oxygen for the rebreather. It's recycler, so we are running on reserves. Let's move on. Ruined hall. Once a loading bay or vehicle hangar, this domed atrium is now dark and distorted. It's huge sand drifts hiding piles of oxidized metal. Above a huge shelf lurches out of the curved roof of the bay. <sighs> Such bad grammar. It's underside hung with globular orange spines. Derelict vehicle. The eaten away frame of vehicle lies outside the lock. The canopy twisted open and fused in place. All right. Arcology entry. A large open lock leads into the depths of what appears to be a corporate arcology. What secrets have been buried in this place? Oh my god, secrets! Open lock. Both doors of the massive lock, main lock sit open. The entire arcology must be flooded. Arcology is what? Archive? Okay, I don't know what that is, but let's go there. Buried concourse. The vast volume of the arcology lies ahead, piled with rock and sand, drowned in this dark ocean. Those are Baikal markings. What was an exoplanet extraction core doing here? I work for Baikal. I mean, I work for Baikal. They built the suit. They built the base. They mine exoplanets, skim helium from gas giants. They help drive forward humanity's expansion. If they'd discovered life, we would have known. Everyone would have known. Unless... Oh my god, they're evil, you guys! Something happened here. Something they didn't want anyone to know about. User X Otero Dive Recorder Observations. Massive breach. Life support will fail in two hours. Is there anyone from Baikal on this channel? Please respond. End. Alright, I guess. Sandy clearing. In all directions, huge sand drifts shine in the dark. Among them, the shapes of crippled buildings resemble the remains of a desert city. go in there. Oh, that looks like a blocked passage. Passage to the northwestern part of the Arcology is blocked by a huge rock slide with boulders strewn across the concourse. Um, I think we're supposed to go in there, but I want to check here as well. Automated transport sled loaded with crushed storage cases juts unevenly out of the sand. You mean the corporate the corporation is evil? Say it isn't so. Silt choked entry, loose wires hanging across the doorway are clumped with fragile lumps of silt like tumorous growths. Okay, there's another thing. Machine room feature the lines of fabricators and machines suggest this was some sort of machine room for the repair and maintain maintenance of the arcology. User E. Harrison, dive recorder, fragment, deep retrieval, needs more repairs. They need to stop pushing so hard the artificers aren't going anywhere. Well, didn't read it fast enough. That's so all right. Cave in, entire corner of the room is piled with tons of rock and sand, leading to a gaping hole in the arcology ceiling above. Buried desk. Distinct shape of a metal desk lies half buried. Surface blurred by a thick coating of silt. Let me guess, it's blocked. It says it's clear. All right. H. Albright, dive recorder. Fragment, say again. Constantine did what? Jesus Christ. Harrison, site two is breached. Power is spiking. End. Building entry, whole facade of this building has been torn away. Rough shapes of metal furniture and tools lie in the sand. So I guess it's not aliens, but... Uh, narrow passage, thick knots of wires strung between the angular buildings. Ducks and pipes poke through the pockmarked metal plates.
bright spirals, metal walls, this passage are etched with strange spiral patterns. What made these? Some glisten with a thick mucus. I'm, I don't care about that sample. Derelict buildings. Main volume of the arcology is broken up by low buildings partitioned away from the space. Were these offices? Homes? I wonder if that's important because it's like etching stuff into the walls, but whatever. Huh, why is it not red anymore? I read that one. Whatever. Alright, sealed alleyway. An alleyway cuts between piles of sand and loose rock sealed up with a mass uh, security iris after a massive breach. Uh. Torch. Prime. Ignite. There you go. Oh, now we can check this one out, I guess. User T. Sigurdsson, dive recorder. Site 2 is silent, nothing from the Orf Ophelos. Site 1 is off the grid. Where are the rescue teams? Collapsing wall, bent at a sharp angle. Wall here is coming away from the floor, leaving a sharp-edged opening into the room behind. Break room. The table's disordered rows of chairs. This had to be where they ate, where they spoke. How many lived here? All right, we got more recorders. K Mikami. Disobedience will be reported. Consider your next action carefully. Damn it, Koji, we are dead and buried here. G. Jones. EF, nothing from the Orphalos. Their fee just cut out. We are being erased here. Baikal is pulling the plug. Scattered seats. Chairs lie in disarray. What happened here? Was it sudden or a slow, creeping realization that everything was about to end? So, there was a collapse and a cover-up, I guess. I mean, that's not a shock. Uh, G. Volkova. Or Ophelos is going down. God damn it, what are they doing to my ship? We are leaving now. Heavy drift. Sand slopes down over a table and chairs from breaching the wall. It's hard not to imagine witnessing the breach. If you say so. Missing wall. Those, were those gaps smashed through them when the arcology was breached, or are they part of the slow processes of rust and decay? Bet we have to explore whatever this is. But we are running out of time. Let's go here. Dark corner of the facility twists away into the dark drifts of pale sand filling its corners, corridors as if it was an ancient tomb. Metal plates here are marked with elaborate spiraling patterns. Their makers, ghostly polyps, scrape back and forth, adding to their work. You're probably supposed to get them and then... Oops, sorry, my cat. You can use them for stuff. Bright spirals. Wall glistens with a thick secretion left by a polyp retracing the same pattern over and over. We could sample this thick mucus here. Yeah, but I don't care about it. Oh, but it's important for the story, you guys. Maybe. Crushed room. The remains of a workshop or office flooded with sand and rock. Twisting metal plating hanging from bent frames. Bent desk, metal desk pushed against the sand drift. A Baikal branded mug holds a pile of rotting paper from drifting away. Uh, Kate Tsuruta. No one is coming to dig, dig us out. Constantine has cost us everything. The entry hall just breached. This is it. Um, actually, let's check out this one. Blocked corridor. Sand has filled this corridor, which looks to have led back to the entry hall. The breach must have been catastrophic. Okay, so there is nothing that way. We did look at those, I believe. Crushed room. This room is totally obliterated by rock and sand. The shards of bent wall are the only remains of the building.
user F Galarza. GF, I'm sorry, Isabel, for what we did here, and what did you do? This place isn't a facility, it's a city. How many more died here? Those without dive recorders, those buried under rock and sand? Makes my skin crawl. Okay. S. Yato. I'm gonna get some shut eye. First geoengineering shift is in four hours. See you in three. Okay, births entry. Door to the births is slid back, revealing the sand choke beds of the Arcology's occupants. I assume we're supposed to go down here, so we're gonna go up here first. We are running out of stuff, though. Um, you don't know that, Jason. They're going to come for us. No one is coming. We both know that. Jay Opali. I lied to get here, Kai, and now I'm going to pay for it. What do you mean? This isn't even my real name. Who are you? I'm Batman. It's like, okay, it's a city, so what? Yep, yeah, we're running low, I know this. Uh, on the still intact berth, slide decomposing clothes, a single glove, a pair of round cladded glasses. Uh, this is... Well, I mean, we have... S nope, those are all oxygen. Oh well. Sand drifts behind the crew quarters. Huge pipes sit against the wall, surrounded by sand. What was powering this place when it was in operation? Uh, let's see. Were they supplying power for their ecology? Perhaps a geothermal plant buried deep below? Uh, wide tunnel to the northern part of the ecology is completely collapsed. Is there anything left under all these tons of rock? So let me guess, um, what's her name? Mine's family died here or something. Uh, shattered atrium feature. This octagonal octagonal atrium was clearly once lined with glass and filled with water as an aquarium at the heart of the facility. Um, are those corals? They must have brought them from the ocean reserves on Earth. You say so. Um, I need to, I, I might be able to sample here. Glowing fan sample can it. This fan seems to have a symbiotic relationship with the corals. It consumes their spawn and they absorb the fan's light. Can I go there? Yes. And we're going to sample and get some stuff. A noon, Mucal 30. Fan sheath, filtering sheath of a glowing fan studded with pollen. Cool. Um, let's go this way. Corroded gap, ragged split in the atrium walls, lined with rust leading through into two to dark particle choked corridors. At least we have power. Sealed crates, metal boxes sit on powered pallets, pallets, abandoned mid-transit. What were they moving in and out of this place? Cave in rock and sand covers the rusted metal of the arcology, so completely it's hard to know where the facility ends and the caves begin. Let's ignore the fact that they want this place sealed, most likely, and will probably kill us. Oh, there's another one of those. A bitiv. Uh, I understand, sir. No, we're preparing to prepare to follow erasure protocols. The site is already sealed with all hands present. Oh, wow. So he was like, yep, I'm going to sacrifice myself. Or maybe he didn't know. Bright spirals. The walls here are covered in spiraling patterns. Some obscure lexicon ridden in glistening trails of mucus. Maybe we can get some oxygen from these guys. Uh, yeah, and power. Alright, what about you? 
Ornate pattern of secretions left in a corroded mucal pattern. There we go, that works for me. Ah, oh, crap, I... Well, it's fine. The caves lead away from the bulk of their arcology, wrapping themselves through the solid crust... Solid rock of the planet's crust. Etched passage. Spirals here are smaller and more interwoven than elsewhere in their arcology. Layer after layer forms a patina of circular marks. Presumably we're getting close to whatever the end of this place is. Ancient passages. These caves look ancient and deep. Is this where the creatures now inside the arcology came from? Did the breach release them? Oh, uh, maybe. Hmm. Pale skin. Large molted skin is piled in the corner of the cave. Fragments of it drifting away from the sand. What creature left this here? This is probably where we're trying to go, I guess. I don't know. Do we want to sample it? Animal tissue. Okay. Larger pale skin. All right. Bam. Do I need to... Whatever. Well, maybe I go around this way. Deep tunnel sand filling this tunnel turns into a dark horizontal slit, but I can detect a current running into it. How deep do these caves lead? I'm trying to find the end. Um, hmm. Well, okay. Maybe we need to scan these things. Pale polyp. Creatures eroding the surface. Yeah. Polyp's flesh recoils with the barest hint of pressure, but no further movement or response occurs. Okay, well. Maybe we need to find more of them. We might need like two more. I don't know. We'll. Okay, spirals etched across the surface, the polyp's path of movement at the rate of an inch per week. Good. Pretty sure I read that already. Let's see if we can find one more of those. I don't know if that's... Can I go up this way? Buried office. Well, what about you? Uh, prime view of the atrium. This had to be office of someone important. Now it's just another derelict room. No, that's the bright fan. That's probably another bright fan. I don't know. Okay. Those fans seem to play a central role in the ecosystem here. I'm going to start recording data. You, you do that. Okay. Okay, slow mason, slow colorless polyps found inside the arcology ruins. They trace spirals of the metal remains of the facility feeding off. I'll call these slow masons for their careful glacial etching into the arcology's walls. They are hypnotic. That's fantastic. Did I not read this one? Yeah, we did. Okay, broken pipe now filled with sand. Looks like it explodes outwards, taking glass atrium wall with it. Did I need to go down here into the middle? <sighs> Hard coral. Yay. Alps build environments for themselves through the calcareous material deposited as their skeletons. Earth originating species of coral families Mucidae and Merlindae feed through both photosynthesis and filtering. 
All right, let us... We're going to stop here. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. really hope you guys are enjoying these episodes. What is your guys' unique positive moment for today? I got to pee really bad. That's why I'm going to stop. Also, I'm wandering around. Um, my unique positive moment is this tea that I'm drinking. It's like a plum kelp tea. Or I think it's just a kelp tea. I don't think there's plum in this stuff. Um, that said, it's all right. It's okay. Not as good as the other stuff that I used to have. Um, so that's my unique pause moment. Hopefully you guys, la, 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 la. Hopefully you're guys just good, if not better. Hopefully better, of course. And I hope to see you guys next time. Till then, guys, take care.